Let us now turn our attention to another important financial calculation, namely that of computing mortgage payments. Admittedly, this is probably in our personal life the way in which we will most likely use financial functions. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Let's say that you're thinking of buying a used car. The price of the car is $5,000 and you're required to pay cash down $1,500. And for the rest of it, $3,500, you're taking a loan, right? So you've approached a bank. The bank is financing the remaining purchase of $3,500. And of course, we need to worry about what is the interest rate at which this loan is going to be paid off and how many payments are we going to make per year. In other words, we're going to make a monthly, uh, we're going to make monthly payments for our mortgage. And over what time period are we planning to pay off the loan? Let's say it's three years. In other words, we'll make 36 total payments. Okay, this is very typical in terms of mortgages. You, you get a mortgage and then you have to pay it off in equal installments over whatever time period you've agreed to. Of course, those equal installments are not going to be, obviously the payment is not going to be 3,500 divided by 36. That's not going to be your monthly payment. Why? If there was zero interest, then that would be your payment. In other words, the bank is not charging you any interest at all and you have to pay off this money in 36 months. Yes, in that case, you would pay 3,500 divided by 36 because there's no interest involved. But there's an interest involved and therefore, you will obviously have to pay some amount of interest and therefore, your total payments will amount to add up to more than $3,500. That's the interest the bank is getting from you. Okay, so for this, there is a calculation and uh, Excel provides a useful function called PMT. Okay, so what we are going to do here is to write a formula here using the PMT function to calculate the equal monthly payments over the next 36 months. And that formula is right here. Right, so we are saying equals PMT B4 divided by B5. Right, so what is B4? B4 is your annual interest rate and we're making 12 payments every year and therefore what is the interest rate per time period? It's B4 divided by B5 or alternately B4 divided by 12. Right? The reason I didn't put 12 in there is uh, suppose you change and say okay instead of paying every month I'm going to pay every quarter. Right? Then putting in 12 here is not a great idea because then you'll have to change the formula. Right? And I'm assuming of course that later on sometime we may have to copy this formula. Let's think of it that way. Of course, right now I've written it in such a way that we don't have to copy anything because all the addresses here are relative addresses. Okay, uh, but it's a good idea again not to put constants in your formula. So therefore, I've isolated the assumption, made 12 here and I said B4 divided by B5. Okay, what is the number of years in which we're going to repay it? That is the thing here. What is the number of time periods of payment? And that of course is B6 times B5, that is 3 times 12 is 36. Okay, and finally, we are saying what is the total loan value, loan amount, and that is B3, which is $3,500. Right, so if you do this, you get that your monthly payment is $104.90. You're going to do that for 36 months. So obviously, you're going to actually repay more than about uh, $3,600, much more than $3,600. Okay, and the, over and about $3,500, whatever you paid, that's the interest that the bank earned on your loan. Okay, and again like before you see that the monthly mortgage payment has come out as a negative value because it's shown in parentheses uh, and in accounting negative numbers are shown in parentheses that's why Excel is showing it to you like this and that is because the loan was money that we got. Right, the bank gave the money to us and the monthly mortgage payments are money that we are paying to the bank. In other words the initial loan that we got and the, inter and the monthly payments we are making are flowing in opposite directions. So Excel is showing you that explicitly by saying that if that is positive, then this is negative. Whereas if you want this number to be reflected as a positive number, then of course we'll have to just say minus B3 and that'll take care of that. Okay, right now I've written the formula in such a way that we're not copying anything anywhere. But most of the time when you use this formula, you'll probably be copying the value somewhere. And therefore you'll have to use uh, absolute addresses and relative addresses properly. Most likely your interest rate is going to be absolute. 
your number of pay payments per uh, uh, year that is going to be absolute this is also going to be absolute so all these three are going to be absolute but typically your bank loan would be a relative thing because you may have many rows each row has a loan amount and therefore when you copy the formula you want that to change in any case none of don't take any of these as as given it depends on the context what is relative what is absolute okay, let's look at the formula and examine each part of it clearly I have already explained it just want to make sure that you understand it okay so this is the formula PMT uh, B4 divided by B5 B6 times B5 B3 so we are saying we are using the PMT function then we are saying interest rate per period of the repayment right so we are doing monthly repayment so we now want to convert the annual interest rate to monthly interest rate so divided by 12 and this is the number of payments which is again we are doing three years but we are making 12 payments per year so we multiply that and say we are going to make 36 monthly payments and then finally the loan amount which is B3 okay so that turns out to be our monthly mortgage payment this is negative because as I've already told you this is an outflow as opposed to the loan amount which is an inflow the two are flowing in opposite directions and that's what Excel is showing you right here okay uh, now suppose we change the number of payments per year and make it quarterly right so that means we are saying we are going to make four payments a year not 12 okay so if you did four payments a year then of course the division by B5 so we just change the 5 to 4 nothing has changed in the formula itself but the result comes out to be 315.90 obviously because we are making one payment every three months so we obviously expect the amount of each payment to be higher let's look at how these formulas would appear if we used named cells right in other words for uh, annual interest rate number of payments per year repayment years bank loan we're going to give names to each of these cells and then see what the formula is going to look like so let's say we call this a cell as car price in other words we give a name to it and we call this as down payment notice that we are not using hyphens instead we are using underscores that's the bank loan this is the annual interest rate that's payments per year and this is repayment years right so if you have all of these named cells then our function would be function call would be equals PMT annual interest rate divided by payments per year repayment years star payments per year bank loan okay so that's how you would write it if you had actually used named cells and you one may claim that these this formula is a lot easier to understand you can also quickly look at the formula and make sure that it's correct and of course uh, in order to do that you want to verify that all the cells have been correctly named once you're sure about that then you can just look at the formula and make sure that it simply makes sense directly mortgage payments every single payment we make consists of a certain amount of money that goes towards paying interest and the remaining part of the part of the money goes towards repaying the principal itself what do I mean by repaying the principal well initially your bank loan was three thousand five hundred dollars you paid a hundred and four dollars and ninety cents or something like that at the end of the first time period now immediately the amount of loan that you have outstanding is not going to reduce by the total amount of hundred and four dollars and ninety cents that you paid right this amount three thousand five hundred that is outstanding will go down by some amount but not by the total amount that you paid why because a part of what you paid is simply interest that part is not going to go to reduce your bank loan whereas some amount of that money is a repayment of your principal and that will actually reduce your outstanding bank loan which means that future interest payments uh, interest amounts will be calculated based on this reduced amount of principal okay so let's take a look at some formulas that will help us to actually see how much interest and how much principal we are paying back and how it changes over time okay so here let's look at this you've got the time periods going for 36 time periods we are seeing only 18 on the screen and of course we already know the formula for this uh, and that is the monthly mortgage payment which is just here right and we are just copied B dollar B dollar eight here because we are going to copy this for all the time periods it's going to be the same why because mortgages are computed in such a way that you make the same payment every month equal amount you pay every installment and that's just convenient right if it were varying from time to time then it will just be very difficult to keep track of here we are saying okay this is your mortgage payment 
Now go and just make that same payment every month. Okay. Now as I had already said, this 10490 consists of some amount of principal, some amount of interest. Now Excel provides us functions to calculate both of these as well. Okay. So to find out how much is the principal payment component of this 10490, there is a function called PPMT. Okay, PPMT, principal payment. And the formula looks very similar to the PMT, except there's a slight difference, right? So we are saying, okay, the first part is interest rate, annual interest rates divided by payments per year. Fine. That is your monthly interest rate. Fine. The second component tells you principal repayment for which time period, right? Now, the mortgage payment itself does not change over time. It's exactly the same for all the time periods. But the amount that you're paying towards principal, that keeps on changing, right? That'll start somewhat low and then it'll keep on increasing. In other words, as time passes, more and more of what you pay will go towards the principal and less and less will go towards the interest. So this amount actually depends upon which time period we're talking about and that is the second argument, the time period. And after that, you know, this is the total number of payments that's just like before and this is a bank loan that's just like before. Okay, so everything is the same except that the second argument is now the time period that we are concerned with. Okay, so if you do that, you get this $90.31 is going towards reducing your principal, right? So at the end of the first time period, initially you started with a loan of $3,500. At the end of the first time period, you made a payment of $104.90, but your loan, outstanding loan, went down to went down only by ninety dollars and thirty one cents why because the rest of it was just interest that you paid to the bank okay so this is how your ppmt function looks first is the interest rate second is the time period you're concerned about third is the number of payments and the last is the bank loan okay so that's how the ppmt function works similarly there's another function called ipmt which is all the arguments are exactly the same as for PPMT except that uh, the function name is IPMT. Okay, so now if you look at that, you see that the interest is $14.58 and you add that to the principal $90.31, you get $104.89, right? That's just round off, right? In financial functions, all of these are full calculations, but they're rounding off to the nearest cent and that is why you see a slight difference. In other words, if you went and did this exact calculation, it'll be $90 and, you know, 31 and some fractional cents and $14.58 and some fractional cents. So you add it all up, you get 104. So now that we've got both of the formulas for principal and interest payments, and we've also used absolute addresses, which is named cells, which translates to absolute addresses for everything except the time period. Right? And the only thing that changes as you go down is the time period. So now we can copy these formulas for all of the remaining time periods. In fact, we don't have to even calculate, copy each of these formulas separately. We can select this entire range and just use the fill handle and that'll copy all the three formulas for all the remaining cells. Okay, so here's just a recap of the IPMT function. Exactly the same as the PPMT function. Only thing that's different is the name of the function itself. Okay, so now we can, like I mentioned earlier, you, we select all of these three, the three cells, we select the, the four cells, this entire range, then we can use the fill handle and copy the formula for all of our time periods and that's what you get. Okay, so you can clearly see here that the principal component started at 9031 and by the 12th time period it's increasing and of course the interest is decreasing correspondingly. So the amount of your payment, the portion of your payment that goes towards reducing the principal keeps on increasing, starts at $90.31 and ends at $104.96, right? Which means that as you go towards the end, almost everything you're paying back goes towards the principal. Very little is going towards the interest. And the interest payment itself, uh, the interest component of your payment keeps on decreasing. So let's see how much we are ending up paying totally and how much of interest and how much of principal are we paying. 
Okay, so if we add up all the mortgage payments, which is 36 times 104.90, we see that we are paying $3,776.33. That's the total amount of payment. Our loan was $3,500, so $276.36 is uh, how much we are paying extra. Okay, so if you add up all the principal payments, it comes out to $3,500 as expected. And all the interest payments come out to $276. Of course, both of these together, they add up to this amount.